So generally we consider uh, nature as uh, a healing, um, with his healing quality and considering nature has something that will actually cure a lot of uh, illnesses. And uh, um, in the, the modern idea of a city, and we have there some photos of, uh, by photographer Robert Burley on some Olmsted Park, was really that a, a city, a park in a city will provide a, a sort of like green lungs. And so there was this idea of uh, green trees, fresh air, as something that will actually help the, the urban texture to have some opening up and some green space and so on. But again, returning to this idea of second nature, we start to, we have to think about like other issues that are related to this idea of green. And uh, recently, in the last 20, 30 years, this idea of green uh, architecture has gone from the idea of like a park or uh, like a, a green part in a city also to the surfaces of the building. So uh, you start to see uh, the skin of a building that is treated as a, a green facade, as like green as becoming like vertical um, structure that help uh, this idea also of biodiversity in the cities. Now, there is a lot of other things that, uh, that in this idea of nature has a good and a green uh, and trees as a good part in the city uh, is also some, could also have some other unexpected uh, aspect. For example, uh, normally in the city are, for aesthetic reason, are chosen plants uh, that are male plants because uh, um, they don't uh, have fruit, so they don't uh, mess up the si uh, sidewalks, let's say. So I, actually, the decision about the sex of, of the plants in a city could actually bring a lot of other complicated issues. So, Having a lot of male plants, we have a lot of pollen, that means aumenting the allergies. So all these kind of little decisions that, that are made in, a, in accordance to the idea of uh, an idealized uh, green city are also bringing other kind of like consequences. So uh, in these galleries, you will see this kind of like tension between the ambiguity of the the good and, and the presence of, the, of green and trees in a city, but also the unexpected consequences related to this. And um, there is also, uh, in, in, in answering a little bit, as Mirko was saying before, the, the idea that architects take on uh, an health issue, they also take on kind of like some aspects of like how the, this uh, health issue is framed. Uh, we start to see uh, coming up, uh, there is a project there, for example, in Italy, Milan, of, of a park that is uh, taking care of uh, thinking of is not an an anallergic uh, park, also taking care of uh, the issue of asthma and so on. But again, it's a little bit a contradiction of having a small park that is doing this in a city that uh, then otherwise is going with another logic and it's a very polluted city. So we have to... Uh, a knowledge that we start to, we live in this kind of like second nature in this polluted environment. And uh, um, there is here a very interesting work by, that is also uh, shown here by a Spanish architect who tried really to analyze this invisible landscape that is covering all our cities. And uh, uh, she actually mapped the three cities uh, Budapest, uh, uh, Madrid, and uh, Santiago de Chile to describe this kind of like invisible landscape that we see with kind of like toxic materials in the different hours of, of, of the day. Um, the, there are, in this respect, there is an interesting uh, shift uh, in the thinking uh, of, uh, for example, what was considered bad, dust. Because uh, 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 some arc in the modern time, the idea of a clean house and hygienic house was at the base uh, of the thinking of most of the architects. And uh, in this part uh, of the exhibition behind this wall, you will see um, this kind of reflection on dust with an interesting project by the Smithson. Uh, in the house of the future in which you see how you have the idea of a cleaning at the entrance of the house, a special cell 
in which you were supposed uh, through the air, a little bit like when you go to the airport now, and uh, they, in the, they control if you have uh, some explosive with you through this. Anyway, which is, uh, anyway, don't comment about that. But nevertheless, there was a similar idea anticipated by the architects in order to have this kind of cleaning from all the dust when you enter the house. And uh, there are today other projects that have been developed uh, that, uh, on the contrary, they assume that the idea of a polluted environment is uh, something that is a normal condition in which we live. Uh, and they try to, to use this idea of pollution as a, represent a symbolic representation of buildings. So most of them, some projects that you see there later, they created some grids which are able to attract the pollution that is present, the dust that is present in the air, in order to cover completely the building. So there is this change of paradigm in the architectural thinking that what uh, 50 years ago was totally unacceptable is becoming today a material for an aesthetic representation of the condition in which we live. And uh, on the other side, behind, uh, let's say, this kind of just a position in this room between uh, the green and the polluted, uh, that is, uh, in a certain way, the two extremes of the urban condition. On the other side, uh, you will address uh, the, we can see a little bit, uh, the idea of the problem of the environmental deterioration and environmental pollution and uh, the cancer related to that. Uh, you see, for example, in that case, uh, the idea of the asbestos, and there is, uh, not only the representation of the mines of asbestos, but also a table in which you see how in the 20s and in the 30s, asbestos was considered by architects, engineers, as the best material in the world because the qualities of this material made this material incredibly light, resistant to fire, a perfect material to be used everywhere. So, there is a manual there in which you see asbestos used for pipes, for roof, for floors, for interiors, for furniture. And even asbestos was treated as, uh, in order to create a tissue, we are not being able, because it was too fragile, but we want in the exhibition to bring this kind of cloth that was supposed people to wear, asbestos cloth. So that uh, to tell you how very often we are going very, very fast to be so enthusiastic about certain solution without having a proper understanding of the consequences of some of our decision, of our incredible uh, uh, sudden uh, faith in some kind of material. And the rest of the room there, you see some uh, of the strategy that very interesting strategy dealing also mainly with nature that uh, landscape architects or artists are using, or architects, uh, means recovering the landscape, which is a basic uh, operation that we have to do, acknowledging the disaster that we produce with the industrial production in the last century. On the other side, uh, you can see there will be a part there in which is dealing with the, some projects addressing the issue not offering a proper solution yet, of the electromagnetic and the, the electronic environment in which we live. So all this kind of possible pollution that could come from that, and uh, you have read on the newspaper questions about the mobile phone and not the, if it is dangerous or not. Anyway, this kind of electronic environment. So there are some projects pr proposing a kind of idea for the future of a specific protected area in which uh, we are protected from any interferences from the uh, electronic waves. So in, in a certain way, why free, uh, free from a Wi-Fi uh, environment. And uh, there is also there one uh, of the most symbolic projects in the exhibition, which is uh, uh, one of the Maggie Center. Uh, the Maggie Foundation has been uh, founded by Charles Jenks because uh, of the um, fact, uh, in honor of the wife uh, who was uh, uh, affected by cancer. And uh, there has been uh, this uh, uh, foundation who has created some center 
uh, for the treatment uh, not of cancer, but uh, for the assistance to the patient and the family of these uh, um, patients. And uh, the idea of a kind of placebo architecture, which is not uh, pretending to offer a, a, or a kind of hospitalized solution for the patient, but more considering a proper human environment for the people and the patient is a, a kind of a, a very important for us in this exhibition because it's suggesting a way in which architecture could produce a much more interesting and consistent way to deal with the problem related to health than pretending really to offer proper solutions. Um, Perhaps I will see in the, in the uh, upper floor this kind of uh, extreme uh, uh, conflict among the different ideas, among the different architects. And generally, you know, architects, they have the tendency to reduce the problem to as much as possible and then to optimize the solution, which is uh, a typical uh, uh, process that we see in a lot of discipline also in health, that you segregate, uh, the, you reduce the problem uh, and uh, segregating the problem and reducing, confining this to a very specific dimension and conditions, you pretend that you are able to find a solution. But in reality, in doing that, uh, you simply don't address uh, the connection and the larger pictures that uh, this problem is part of. So it's a kind of self-criticism that we hope architects will be able to take on in respect to their attitude towards the environment.